But figure skater, uh, Tessa Virtue, Scott Moyer, you will remember those two names together. Do you ever have to introduce yourself, Scott, and include Tessa's name so it connects for people? And they're like, Scott Moyer, athlete, I know that name. And you say, yeah, Scott Moyer, Tessa Virtue. And then they're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. You know what? It never hurts to drop Tessa's name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you, I used to have to say that, and uh, especially with my buddies. Um, yeah. They, they like to bring that up, that uh, I was just I lucky to be uh, close enough to the stratosphere of Tessa and uh, just hang on for a couple of years. But yeah, thanks for having me on today. I'm pretty excited. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. We should get you a Yes, I Know Tessa t-shirt. <laughs> that would be great, eh? I think that would sell. That would sell well for me. Yeah, there you go. That could be the uh, That could be the post post-retirement plan for you <laughs> at least at least there's one <laughs> yeah that's good so are, i mean are you retired from skating now is that official yeah. should we yeah we are officially retired so we we retired from uh, olympic skating um olympic competition i guess after the pyeongchang games in uh, 2018 and we're fortunate enough to be able to tour the country a couple times really celebrate uh 22 years of skating together and, and 22 years of uh, representing the country and kind of with our teammates as well. We came up with some, I would say, pretty fantastic Canadian skating icons. Um, you know, Patrick Chan, Caitlin Osman, to say the least. So uh, we, we were able to tour the country with them, go to Japan and tour the world uh, on a couple tours. And um, at one point, you know, it, it was a very, very natural for Tess and I. We looked at each other and we we're like, I just don't have the same passion for this. And we always said we wanted to do it when we loved it. Um, and at one point, we knew we had to, to work really hard um, to be able to deliver the quality of skating that we want our fans uh, to see and, and kind of hopefully they'd come accustomed to. And uh, with other things coming up in our lives, uh, we, we, I don't know if we just weren't willing to do that, but we didn't want to see the work suffer. And mostly we didn't want it to become work. So that's where the decision to retire came. Um, it was really about the Olympic Games for Tess and I. Uh, once the drive of that Olympic title of, um, you know, of representing our country and, and being Canadian was gone, um, we were skating for our fans. And then after that, it was time to say goodbye. Well, and it must be incredibly conflicting when you look at that other person who you've invested so much of your life into, you know, that is, I mean, I, I maybe, <laughs> maybe a business partner would understand that. I mean, you're looking at yeah. this business partner and you're looking at them and you wouldn't be who you are today without that person. Everything, you know, is sort of getting up in the morning and seeing that person first thing in the morning when you get to work. And yeah. then now you're making the, cognitive decision to say all right sister I, you know there's nothing wrong here but maybe it's time to push pause like that must well, be so difficult it, that was an interesting part and i mean i think it was uh at the beginning of our conversations uh i don't know it's hard to to kind of compare our relationship but it, it really was a business partnership i mean we had 22 years we grew up together um, there's a lot of real love there. We weren't romantically involved, but we, we love skating with each other. We love each other on a deep level, still do. Um, but uh, to be, to press the brakes, it, it's a little bit strange. And uh, I think we kind of waltzed around it um, for a couple of, of, you know, conversations. And then eventually once one person was just like, I just don't feel it anymore. It was kind of like, oh, thank God, me neither. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but our career was like that. You know, when I look back and think about how fortunate we were, we were fortunate uh, even as little kids. We, we were kind of always on the same page that way. Uh, when we won juvenile as uh, I don't even know how old we were, 10 and 8 or maybe 11 and 9. And um, then we just wanted to win pre-novice. We knew that. It just kind of came naturally for us every year. Our parents would sit us down and be like, okay, so do you want to skate this year? And we both look at each other and be like, are you guys nuts? Like, we have to. We can't wait. We're going to win novice. And then we're going to win junior. And then the Olympics were announced. We're going to go to the Olympics. And so even when we decided to come back for one more kick at the can at the Olympics, we both wanted to do it. Uh, and I think that's kind of – hopefully that speaks to the strength of our partnership is – uh, we always had this parachute clause where I only wanted to do it and understood that I wanted to do it only if Tessa really wanted to do it. Yeah. And almost like we respected each other's opinion um, more than our own. Uh, I remember when we came up with the idea to skate to Moulin Rouge at the Olympics, I didn't believe in it until I saw how excited Tessa was about it. So um, yeah, a business uh, partnership, but which isn't over. Um, I mean, I, I miss Tessa dearly. This one suffers in the lockdown their own way, but, we're in separate bubbles right now. So, I mean, in 23 years, we haven't gone this long without seeing each other. It's so, so, so strange. Uh, but 
ultimately we had other goals that we wanted to accomplish personally. Um, I Tessa is doing her MBA right now, uh, Queens, which I'm so proud of. And that was a big part for me, you know, like I really love touring and seeing our fans, but when Tessa was like, well, should I go to school? And I know she talked about that for a long time. I was like, you have to, now that's when it made sense to me. And, and I wanted to start a figure skating school in my hometown. And uh, so there's a lot of things and a lot of other goals that we just simply couldn't do everything. Hmm. Well, you are doing things now. You've partnered up with a whole new group. Um, the hashtag mm-hmm. is my home is Canada. So it's uh, it's a marketing campaign to bring Canada together and Clubhouse, uh, the seasoning company. I think that's safe. McCormick Canada. They've um, <laughs> they, they've 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 really sort of gotten behind this marketing campaign to share from home, sort of like you described. Right, everyone's in their bubbles. How do we share that? So tell us about this and what's your intention behind it. Like, what do you, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, and and I was one of the fortunate things about uh, our position and being able to connect with so many Canadians is uh, we get to work with, with great Canadian companies uh, like Clubhouse, who's 135 year history in London, Ontario, us being born and, and raised in the London area. Uh, it was a, a fitting partnership. And this initiative is, is isn't crazy complicated, uh, but it comes at a great time uh, when, you know, it has been, it's been a heavy year uh, kind of turning over the, the calendar into 2021, everyone's looking for some hope. And, and I think kind of the blue days are, are just starting to drag here. Uh, and, you know, the the novelty, if there ever was such a thing of, of a lockdown and staying home is really wearing off. So this campaign is, is really to bring a little bit of light, uh, is to just give people a little opportunity to, to remind ourselves. And it's worked even even on me. Like, hey, it's we're still so fortunate to have this great country, to be able to... Uh, you know, maybe maybe slow down a little bit. Uh, we've had a lot of great pictures come in. Uh, the idea behind the campaign and uh, really the initiative. I'm not really a campaign guy, so I keep calling it the initiative. Uh, is just to document what makes us Canadian and what people feel like um, makes us Canadian. Obviously, a big part of being Canadian is the people. Um, so we want to kind of see what people think makes them Canadian. And uh, being in such a diverse, beautiful country, um, there's a lot of opportunities, whether it's culinary. Uh, we've had a lot of great scenic uh, pictures and really you just go, if it's inside your house, if you can't get out, and I know a lot of people are, are kind of stuck in that situation, but um, it's whatever you think it is. And, and we're looking for people to be creative, take a picture and then use the hashtag on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. My home is Canada. Uh, pour le Francais, uh, chez moi c'est le Canada. Ca is the website and, so, I mean, just, just share with us and then we're going to make a, we're going to take these pictures, combine them together uh, and make a spiritual light show. That's very cool. Yeah, it's very, it's cool. very so- simple, but it's, it's, I think uh, hopefully it, it kind of is a little bit of a motivation. I know I when I did so. my first picture, like I, I was like, okay, I better do something. What's Canadian. You know, I was going to go out on the snowmobile, but in, in Southwestern Ontario right now, I can't believe I'm saying this because in places there's too much snow, but yep. we don't have as much snow as I wish we did. So I got out, it was by the fire in the winter and I got out there and it's like, Oh crap. Like this is awesome. Like, I forget even just being outside and force myself to do something a little different. Yep. Um, yeah. You get the chance to enjoy it. So hopefully even if it does that for one or two people, I'd say it's worth it. Well, it does bring up for me how wonderful and gorgeous our country is. I, you know, I, um, I, I look at it from, from that perspective. Every year I like to go to Hawaii. It's my favorite place to go. I don't go the fancy route. Um, mm-hmm. I like to have a nice bed to sleep in, but I will go to all of the places that the normal tourists don't go. It's just yeah. my favorite place on the, on the planet. But th- what what not being able to go this year has made me really look at, well, where haven't I gone in my own country, right? So what I see when I look at these pictures that are on, on the website for everybody, if you want to link it up, by the way, it's myhomeiscanada.ca again. Um, you know, you can see some places where you're like, oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Vancouver and, and the, the Olympic uh, spot down by the water there, you, you can see where the cauldrons were. Like that stuff's okay, cool. I've seen that. But then, you know, I haven't seen the Far East, right? Like I haven't. There's so many places that to go to where, and I know it's amazing, but yet it's not been on my hit list and I don't understand why. So this does get me thinking about maybe traveling in Canada and dedicating some time to that. 
I feel a, a bit the same way, actually. Um, I was I was talking the other day, I forget with who, but uh, about how I, you know I've never really been up to the territories. I've never been to Northwest Territories. I've never been to Yukon. You know, and, um, a big part of our country uh, that's really really vast and beautiful. I I want to take it in. Tessa actually made me jealous. Uh, she did a a trip up there, and, and I. That's the one corner I haven't been to, uh, but I will say the east is unbelievable. The west is unbelievable. Central mountains, I mean, that's what makes Canada so neat. It's so different, uh, yeah. and, and getting into all these different little corners, I mean, and seeing the personality uh, come out in all these little corners, it makes it so cool. So, yeah, that's what I like about the pictures, too. Like, you can kind of tell, even without looking at the captions, where it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. All yeah. right. So is there, are there any deadlines? So what's the deadline to this? Is there a timeline on any of it that, that uh, I didn't catch here? Good question. Uh, there, there was a deadline. It was the 19th of January. So we're past that. And oh, good. Uh, we've convinced, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eh? But we've, we've decided that we're going to open it up for a couple more days. We, we really like the material coming in. Um, you know, it's been a lot of fun online interacting with some people, uh, something I probably don't do enough being able to, to use social media for its positive um, be able to reach out and, and chat with the fans. And so we're opening it up for a couple more days. I don't know if we're going to have a hard, um, like a hard deadline, uh, but you definitely have a, a day or two more. So, you know, Perfect. if you have that picture that you want to get and, and send in, uh, there's a good chance it'll still be uh, included. Yeah, I know there are a couple of photographers that are, um, that are listening to the show and they're, they're going to appreciate that. They contribute all the time. So get in on it. My home is Canada. The hashtag my home is Canada. If you want to search it, uh, that's also a great way to do that. And if nothing else, go look at all the pictures. I think it's safe to say thanks to uh, all the folks at clubhouse and McCormick Canada and all of the Canadian companies that get involved in this and other things. Um, that's pretty cool. Scott Moyer, uh, here for conversation with us. Uh, you know, I'd love to have you come back in the show. I'm a little surprised you don't have your tight pants on, but whatever. I know. I know. Well, uh, yeah, it's, that's abnormal for me, but uh, they just don't fit quite the same as they used to. I was going to say post COVID, <laughs> do the tight pants even fit? Are you like yeah. me? Have you graduated to sweatpants only and elastic waistbands? Uh, you know what? Like uh, for, for figure skaters or athletes, like you live in, you live in leisure wear or whatever. Like, I remember when I retired, like just being able to put on grown up clothes was nice, right? Because you put on a, a pair of sweatpants and head to the rink, and uh, that's your Monday to Friday, which isn't a bad gig. So at home, you know, I'm usually a blue jean guy, um, but it's amazing. Like, I really do feel like the guy, uh, uh, men and women who are at, on the panels for NHL playoffs, you know, with their suits and. Uh, and then on the bottom, they have their board shorts on. I always yep. have the, the look going, and I have to make sure there's not a uh, reflection where you can see me and no <laughs> pants on. in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, man, it's a beautiful thing. Will you keep us up to date with what you're uh, getting up to here? Because I love this initiative. And obviously, yeah. we spoke to about change. We spoke about change off the top there. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of change coming for what's next for you. Is there any uh, insight of what you're up to? For sure. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of exciting things um, for us. Uh, I think a big part after the Olympic Games was, you know, trying to be a contributing member of my family again. Uh, you know, as an athlete, you, there's so many sacrifices that your, your family takes. So uh, I'm happy to be kind of back in my, my hometown of Ilderton, Ontario, close to my mom and dad, where I can uh, help out here and there and see my nieces and nephews. Um, but also I'm starting, a, a an elite ice dance school here in the London area. And, uh, we're very excited about it. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to bring some world-class, uh, more world-class athletes to our country, uh, to train here and hopefully influence our, our Canadian athletes to, to go for the opportunities that we were able to have. And that, that I'm super pumped about, um, on a personal note, I'm one of those people who was supposed to get married during, during COVID, uh, didn't happen. I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting getting that uh, going. Uh, hope, I don't know if it'll be this summer now, probably next, and uh, starting our own family. Wow. Wow, man. Change all enough? over the place. Is that enough? <laughs> I feel That's like I'm getting so stressed out just, just talking about, about it? all that. Hey? Oh, man. <laughs> we might need to have a drink. Um, <laughs> well, thanks so much. So we've passed the deadline. Yeah, right. What is the new deadline? It used to be like it's four o'clock and it's happy hour somewhere. And yeah. now I, I, I will admit that I did confess that even just last weekend, I, uh, I was watching hockey and I had an Irish whiskey 
uh, in, in a glass and I just got tired. So I went to sleep, but I didn't take the glass off of my nightstand because I finished watching the hockey game in bed. And I, I did admit to the audience that I actually woke up in the morning and I was like, well, you don't want to waste it. Yeah, well, at least it's Irish whiskey, right? Like that, it's neat. You can, you, it's still going to be sitting there looking at you. It's not like a, a flat beer or a mixed drink that just looks like crap in the morning. Exactly. That thing's still primed and ready to go. So well, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, a little kickstart in the morning. It was right. a little interesting that day, I'm sure. Yeah, and I I swear to God, it winked at me when I got up. So I was like, <laughs> I'll just it's take it. It's a hockey back, I will say that. It's a lot of work for all these people to put the work in, uh, bubbles and all that. But I am enjoying having uh, the NHL back. Yeah, me too. I agree. Scott Moyer, um, you can check it out once again. My Home is Canada, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the spots. My Home is Canada.ca to see it as well. Thanks so much, Scott. Look forward to chatting again, brother. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. 